Hey guys, Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist. Just got back from Boston, my old stomping grounds of Boston where I did my Harvard residency. Great to see my old colleagues, mentors, attendings. My roots and foundation, I have to credit my attendings, Dr. Robert Stern, Dr. Ellen Rowe, and many others. Let's talk about some current events. I'm a big movie buff, grew up watching Will Smith, and also, you know, Chris Rock has always been just hilarious to me. And I've even seen him live. He came to Hawaii once, and I saw him at Blaze Dale, Neil Blaisdell Center. Awesome comedian. I think we all can say we're pretty traumatized after what happened at last week's Oscars. So for those of you who didn't watch the Oscars, I bet most of you have heard about it. Chris Rock was presenting awards for best documentary, I think. And then he had to throw some jokes out. Quickly shift to Jada Pinkett Smith. And she has, she's been rocking a really short hairdo dealing with alopecia. If you were to follow Jada's uh, hair loss journey, it's, it stems back from 2018 when she went public talking about alopecia. She's never talked about what type of alopecia Let's go into alopecia. So all the news sources have taken this story and they've kept saying to Jada Pinkett Smith has alopecia. She suffers from alopecia. Alopecia is not a diagnosis, guys. It is a symptom. It means hair loss. And there are different types of hair loss, different types of alopecia. We break it down as dermatologists, scarring alopecia and non-scarring alopecia. Scarring alopecia is kind of a, an emergent thing. You have to get on it and shut down that inflammation quick before it scars down your scalp skin. Once the scalp skin is scarred down, it is is very difficult or almost impossible to regrow hair in that bad patch of skin. Imagine a field and you're trying to grow some crops, aka your hair, if you just throw a bunch of rocks down and the soil's bad, you can't grow crops in that bad soiled area. Non-scarring alopecia, there's no rocks thrown in there, it's just the seeds are bad. A lot of times we will break that down into hormonal, genetics, so it could be for a man like myself, it could be androgenetic alopecia. For females, we call that female pattern alopecia, so those are actual diagnoses, right? Another diagnosis in non-scarring alopecia category would be alopecia areata, which I think Jada has. I'm not her dermatologist. I don't know her dermatologist. And so I'm just speculating that most likely she has alopecia areata, which is an autoimmune hair loss condition where her own cells or your own cells would be attacking the hair follicles. And if you were to take a piece and biopsy that patch of hair loss, that alopecia patch, you would see, we call it the swarm of bees. It's just a bunch of your lymphocytes going after the hair follicle and destroying it and you lose your hair. And so you have a discrete patch of baldness, not like thinning, not like you're receding your hairline. That's more androgenetic alopecia or in women, you have female pattern alopecia where your part widens. You actually have a patch, whether small or large patch of hair where it's just all gone. And it can get to the point where it's alopecia totalis where you lose all of your hair on your scalp or universalis where you lose your hair everywhere, your eyebrows, armpits, groin area, no hair. We do see that in dermatology dermatology actually quite a bit. And just mild forms of alopecia areata is very common. We see in kids and adults, and it's usually triggered in times of stress. You can end up getting a flare of alopecia areata where you lose a large patch of hair or all your hair, or you start shedding your hair as well called telogen effluvium, which is stress-related hair loss. It triggers hair shedding. Your hair cycle goes from the growth phase to the sleep phase. Most of our hair should be in the growth phase, but when you have a stressful event or if you get sick, like you're hospitalized, we're seeing this after COVID, your hair cycle will shift more towards the sleep phase or telogen phase, and then they'll fall out. Now, scarring alopecia, I forgot to mention, things that you see as scarring alopecia would be like other autoimmune things like lupus. So discoid lupus, discoid lupus erythematosus or DLE, that's a cutaneous scarring alopecia, or that's a cutaneous lupus that have has a risk for becoming full systemic lupus. When it affects the skin, it can affect the scalp, the face, the ears, and cause a dark scar. And when it's on the scalp, you can have a permanent patch of alopecia there. Another process that we see that can cause a scar in alopecia would be like frontal fibrosing alopecia or lichen plano pilaris or LPP. Going back to alopecia areata, there are different treatments for it. There's topical steroids, which is not very good. It's okay. And there's steroid injections like Canalog. Dermatologists will inject into the area where there's hair loss, the risk for it would be if we put too much, you can have either a temporary atrophy or a little divot where we inject. And a lot of times they do fill in again, or it could be permanent. So that's the risk for that. Other things you can consider would be like oral steroids with your dermatologist. If things are really progressing quickly, you can consider squaric acid where you're going to sensitize yourself to this acid and apply it to these patches of alopecia and try to stimulate new hair growth and control things at an immunologic level. Other things you can consider oral medication 
medications like methotrexate, immunosuppressive stuff, but that's for really severe or stubborn recalcitrant cases. So we are looking at things like JAK inhibitors, whether oral or topical. So far in the topical realm, you know, they are approving some JAK inhibitors topically for atopic dermatitis, but I've had some that have been specially compounded for my patients with alopecia areata and vitiligo, and it's very so-so results right now, and I'm not that impressed so far. So we'll have to keep looking for more formulations, new data, new evidence on the JAK inhibitors for these autoimmune conditions, whether it's vitiligo, where your body's attacking pigment, or alopecia areata, where your body's attacking your hair follicles. And I'll go into alopecia areata. There are studies that show that people with alopecia areata, they have have a higher rate of depression and anxiety. This is well known. This is actually probably universally true for all forms of hair loss. My female patients, male patients are so devastated when they start dealing with hair shed, hair loss. And so when you have alopecia areata and you're losing massive amounts of hair in a short period of time, it is very stressful. And it's almost adding fuel to the fire. And it's like this bad cycle where you're losing hair due to stress and you're getting more stress from losing hair. And I feel for my patients. And so we try to act quickly and not just give like top steroids and say, okay, see you later. We actually try to talk about injecting medicine into the area where the swarm of bees are in the scalp, try to make them go away and recover. And when I see you back in about six weeks, hopefully we see new baby hairs that are light peach fuzz that will turn into dark terminal hairs and full thicker hairs in the next visit after that. So we usually go about every six weeks of injections and follow-ups and try to stay on top of things. And hopefully, you know, most of the time I say over 90% people respond very well to those injections. Now, Jada has been been dealing with it for a while and also publicly she's you know been talking about it for about four years saying that she has to shave her head because these stubborn patches weren't getting better and so instead of having a stubborn patch at the front of her hairline she's going to deal with it shift pivot and shave her head and she's rocking it she's doing a great job but I can tell you that my patients do come in tearful and I have to you know really I feel awful when they have uh, to deal with hair loss and I you know if you talk about androgenic alopecia or female pattern alopecia my male patients they'll go on oral medications like finasteride, even if there's a risk for impotence, you know, sexual dysfunction, it can bother them so much that it's worth the risk. And so it depends on the person. Some people say, hey, fine, I'm going to just shave my head and live on and live with it. But there are some people who are really bothered and will go on oral medications, whether immunosuppressive or influence hormones to help stop or slow down the progression of their hair loss. So I just wanted to do a quick video on that, guys. And I hope this was helpful because alopecia areata affects all ages, males and females all across the globe in all different races, ethnicities. Dermatologists, we're here for you to help one, classify your alopecia, whether it's scarring, non-scarring, and then take it from there. Most of the time it is just really genetics or hormones and those are really hard to treat, but I'll be talking about hair loss more because during this pandemic, it's been really hard. We've been seeing a lot of a lot more hair loss cases from the stress of the pandemic, post-COVID infections or any infection you might have or any reason for you to end up in the hospital, you know, like a traumatic event where you broke your arm, you can lose your hair after that having a heart attack or stroke. I've seen people lose their hair after that. I'll continue to talk about this on the channel. I'd say is in general for if you're having any form of hair loss, one, see your dermatologist, two, get enough sleep, more than six to eight hours of sleep, eat a well-balanced diet, stay hydrated, and also manage your stress. That can be almost impossible for many of us, but at least trying to prioritize exercise, getting out outside, getting fresh air while wearing your sunscreen, because that really can be insidious and really sneak up on you and cause hair loss that can be hard to control. So that's just my little talking points today. And I just want to say thank you again for the 100,000 friends here on YouTube. And I'll see you guys for the next video. All right. Take care and peace.